Hello everyone and welcome to episode 67 of my Guild Wars 2 Let's Play series where last episode we began exploring the beautiful zone of Timberline Falls where we have 50% map completion and today I want to go ahead and continue our explorations in this zone by heading down to the bottom half of the map and finishing up the zone and taking a look at a couple of cool things along the way where I can go ahead and summon my flesh golem that we were playing with yesterday and he can go ahead and help us out in battle and let's go ahead and just continue through the map where we have a scout a task and a vista and a waypoint and another waypoint and so many other things that we can get over here so let's go ahead and maybe start off with trying to get to this vista wish let's go ahead and mount up if we come around this way i think maybe it's here we have to find a way up on top of this mountain uh, it's definitely not here is it we can climb up here from jumping up there and then we can go ahead and continue our way up this way where i was wanting to do some experimentation with weapons so i'm gonna go ahead and try to find a weapons vendor but first the vista And that vista kind of shows a little bit of a spoiler because we have this area over here which is a vigil and priory outpost and it is currently destroyed and it gets destroyed later on in the story and we've seen a few areas like this but we're mostly just going to ignore that for now and we're just going to help out with this area with raising the flags of the vigil and the priory and we can go ahead and clear out undead creatures and just assist with the patrols which I think there is actually a hero challenge over here. If I recall correctly, we have all these Graw. Let's go ahead and deal with them. A Graw effigy. But I've been really enjoying playing Necromancer. And I talked about this a bit last episode, I think. But I'm really excited to unlock more stuff on Necromancer. Because it becomes a really, really, really fun class. And I'm kind of wanting to become a little bit of like a Death Knight type of character with this character. Which I have ideas for like all my different characters that I kind of want to highlight in some capacity throughout this Let's Play series. But let's come into here. Just a ton of Graw. I have a very fond memory with this cave from back in like 2015 I think where I was still pretty new to Guild Wars 2 but I had just joined the guild that I am still a part of and I'm now a leader of but I remember interacting with somebody who used to play a lot back in the day but unfortunately does not play anymore and I was trying to build like a legendary like weapon or something and I needed cloth and I was like talking to this person about how I need to get cloth and I needed like specifically like wool scraps or whatever and these Graw drop the wool scraps or whatever type of cloth that they drop. So that person came here and kind of farmed a bunch of Graw and got a bunch of cloth for me which was very sweet of them and I really appreciate that and that's kind of just like a fun interaction that I've had with somebody but it also kind of brought up an interesting discussion about game balance of all things because Guild Wars 2 is a really interesting game when it comes to farming because basically a lot of like high level farming in this game is just doing stuff that gives you a lot of items and then you sell those items for gold and then you keep some items that you think you might need but then you use that gold to basically buy the specific items that you need and if you're trying to farm like a cloth specifically it's not really optimal to come to a specific spot to farm that cloth specifically and it becomes even less optimal when you take into account a mechanic called diminishing returns where if you spent a lot of time in this cave killing the growl you're going to get less and less cloth compared to if you did like a bunch of different activities and got a bunch of different items spread out around the world and that's kind of just to prevent like botting and like just farming something for like hours on end in like one specific area of the road which in other MMOs is something that you kind of see a lot like whenever I play World of Warcraft I definitely spend a lot of time in like a certain area of the road trying to get a bunch of linen cloth so I can get my tailoring started if I didn't get enough while I was leveling through the zones that give me linen cloth specifically 
and like so on and so forth with like a bunch of different items so it's kind of just interesting to see like how good wish 2 as a game is pretty different from like other games where you kind of like earn gold and you earn materials in a unique way another player to help out and let's go ahead get this ritual tribal paint and we have some grot paint we can go ahead and double click and we can spread it all over ourselves and we can see that we're a little green for a moment but we got a hero point from doing that where let's go ahead and continue out this way where i might try to just run through really quickly and we need to kill a few more grow for the task so maybe the scroll will do As I'm running out, the crawls that I killed at the start of the cave are starting to respawn because I killed them a little slowly. But that's okay because we can get some scraps of fur and I haven't really gotten in cloth from them yet. Which is kind of funny because I was just talking about my memories with farming cloth in this place. And there's our task complete. And we have this big group of crawl right here that maybe I can finish really quickly, get some experience. I got a heavy bone, which is nice. We can use that in crafting. Let's go ahead, get our task reward. And last scraw, no cloth from them. But let's go ahead, come out here where I need to get this waypoint and then we can go chat with the scout over there. So let's go ahead and pretend that this place is not destroyed. And we can go ahead and just run through here really quickly to grab this waypoint. There we go, Concordia. A location that may or may not be important in a few episodes and that is not related to it being destroyed it's going to get destroyed a while from now but let's go ahead and come around here where we have the scout that we can go ahead and chat with and we are kind of approaching the end of this zone as far as tasks go the alliance of the Durman priory and the vigil has been constructed though even together we are challenged care evermore is under constant attack by the risen as the Priory scours the surrounding ruins for ancient secrets of the Elder Dragons. Let's go ahead and continue down this way where we have this alliance between the Priory and the Vigil going on right here, which is kind of remarkable given their personal relations with each other. But we can come down here where we have a really, really cool area where I just got this waypoint. And if we come across this river, we can see this researcher with some golems here. And we can see the Priory are excavating these ruins. And these are Dwarven ruins, which are really, really cool. And I love seeing Dwarven ruins spread here and there throughout the world. And there are just a bunch of risen in this area that we can go ahead and deal with. Where these ruins in particular are really, really cool because there might be some special artifacts hidden in this area that the Priory are trying to find. And we can go ahead and just assist them here where I got the Rancor Ruins waypoint. And I think there is a hero challenge again this way. So let's go ahead and work our way over towards that while just defending the golems and gathering some different things along the way. We got one ragtail right there and some more risen up here that we can deal with. We are very powerful against these Risen, which is good to see they are being demolished. Where I was kind of struggling against the Grawl, and speaking of which, I think, oh, there's actually a Weaponsmith up here that I should have gone and chatted with, but there's also one down here. So I'm going to do my best to remember it, and my memory is not always the best when it comes to like my short-term memory and wanting to do something in a specific episode that I think of at the start of the episode. But I'll try to remember to buy some weapons down there, but if you come through here, we have, I think right here, yes, a passage through this cave. I'm going to have to dismount. There's another player with us right there, which is cool. But we have Earl's Delve, a hero challenge. And there are some dead priory in here, which is unfortunate. But also a cave spider that we can go ahead and kill really quickly, as well as these other cave spiders. And maybe we'll get task progress for this. Uh, doesn't look like it. But, oh, there's a veteran cave spider event going on. And then that shadow skilk is coming this way. So it looks like... We just aggro a lot of stuff, but that's like a fun hidden event where we kill the spiders and then this big spider came out. But now we can continue with this hero challenge where we have gotten two hero points this episode that we can go ahead and put into something that we want. And looking down here, it seems like I've unlocked every single elite skill that we currently have. And I'm kind of considering maybe going back to Plaguelands and dropping the Flesh Golem, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll just leave it for now. There are a ton of Risen that just appeared right here, so let's go ahead and deal with them. That's going to be good for our task progress, because the Risen give a ton 
Oh, there's an event starting. I suppose that is why there are a bunch of Risen down here. Let's go ahead and help out with the event for a little bit. I probably won't complete the entire event, but it will give us some good progress towards our task, which I think after these two Risen, we will probably be good. There we go. Let's go ahead, pick up our task reward there, and head south out of the ruins, where I think I got everything right here. And we can go ahead and continue south towards care evermore which is actually a really really cool spot that i like a lot and i have a ton of memories with this location one of the oldest videos that i ever made and one of the only old videos that i still have left uploaded on youtube because i deleted most of the videos i used to make back in the day but one of those videos is located right here at care evermore where i was highlighting a bug and the bug is not currently happening but i know it happens every now and then still like eight years later which is kind of fun we got to this point of interest but this is just a cool fort where we can see some visual around here and it is kind of like a savari themed base but i really like this area of the world particularly because of this map entrance right here that looks really really cool because this map portal will take us to the next map in the game mount maelstrom which we saw an entrance to over here in the sparkfly fin on like this corner of the map but we did not go through it but we can see there's like cool towers and like a bridge between them up there and i just love this area in general because of like these waterfalls but there are two additional so that's two already two more fun things about this area that i like a lot one of them is because we have the guild wars 2 wiki which is a phenomenal resource and the guild wars 2 wiki is probably the best wiki out of every single game's wikis there's like some good like other wikis like the stardew valley wiki is pretty good and the troia wiki is pretty good but guild wars 2's wiki and like the team that like keeps Gilbert's 2's wiki up to date is just absolutely phenomenal and a fantastic resource for anyone who plays Gilbert's 2. And I have messed around a little bit with the wiki without like, contributing to it and I kind of want to do a little bit more in the future just to like help out where I can. But the only thing that I really did was in this area of the world where this is called the Talus Water Slide we can see right here where if you come to the Talus Water Slide Wikipedia page at the bottom you can see the trivia section. Talus is a word meaning rocky debris at the base of hills, cliffs, or valleys, which that's a fun fact, but I am the one that contributed that little piece to the Wikipedia page because I noticed a discrepancy on the wiki where you can go to the Guild Wars wiki to the Talus shoot and somebody basically posted the exact same thing there where I copy pasted that to the Talus water slide wiki page for Guild Wars 2 after confirming that that's actually what that meant. And that's my like so major contribution to the Guild Wars 2 wiki, which is kind of fun to think about. It's really small at the end of the day, but you know, it's kind of special because I did it, you know? But if you're someone who likes helping out with communities and helping out with like finding information and kind of like doing a variety of things related to wikis, you can go ahead and check out the Yodish 2 wiki and help them out. But the fourth and I think final cool thing about this very specific area of the world is that there's actually a hidden cave over here, which is kind of fun and hidden, as in there's some stuff blocking the entrance to it right here. And we can go ahead and jump through here and we can see this very beautiful area where there's nothing going on in here, but there's just a ton of waterfalls and we can see some like sky beams coming in through here as we can look up out of this little cave that we're in and it's just a very very beautiful area but we leveled up to level 58 so let's go ahead and get our reward from that seal of the soldier why not probably not even going to remember to equip it and i just remembered i need to go buy some weapons so maybe let's go over there a very interesting thing is that you can't have mounts in this area and there's no like mini dungeon and there's no like jumping puzzle around here but it's still mount restricted and it might be related to like the map entrance and like getting over it or something but we can't have mounts here but we can come up here to this weapon smith where we can look at a few different items that we can consider buying where i want to take a look at swords but we won't unlock swords for a very very long time but i think if we come into here there's one item that i really want to get and we have already explored it and i just want to pick it up again because i think it's going to work out well for what i'm currently going for and that is an axe which should be at the top here uh that requires level 60 uh maybe i'll just buy that because this weaponsmith is a pretty high level weaponsmith so in two levels we can use that axe and i might get a better one and oh that's awkward and we can use this axe actually right now so 
That was kind of a waste. Well, that's weird. But we have strong daggers and we have this warhorn here. Maybe I will put the strong dagger here. And then let's go ahead and put this axe up here. So then we have axe, dagger, and then we have dagger, warhorn. So our dagger, warhorn is going to be kind of like a close range weapon. And our axe, dagger is going to be a little bit longer ranged. So depending on the situation we are in, we can go ahead and use our axe if we are wanting to be further away. Or we can also use it up close as well. And then if we are up close, we can use our dagger. Yeah, I'm definitely liking this axe. It feels good right now, especially with kind of what we're going for with a little bit of a like power damage build because we're applying some vulnerability and it's just some straight damage without much like condition damage going on and no condition damage going on. The only conditions we have are vulnerability and cripple, which don't really deal damage. They just alter the enemy stats in a variety of ways. There's this task complete. So we are 70% of the way through Timberline Falls. And we can go ahead and come over here where we have two more tasks left in the zone. And let's go ahead and chat with the scout to see where one of them or both of them are. These waters are teeming with crate determined to control the region. Around the lake are Quaggan and Hylic that desperately need your protection. Hurry, before they're all completely wiped out. So we have two tasks over there by a massive lake. And we have some stuff over here we can get, and then there's some stuff over here. So maybe I'll come to the lake's edge here, get anything right here, and then maybe I'll waypoint up here and come down this way. So we can kind of go through this last area kind of systematically. But we have to go through this little swampy area, which is kind of fun to see, like the swamps down here, where Timberline Falls is mostly like snowy mountains and like a very verdant forests but we have mount maelstrom which is kind of a swampy area and we can see the map transitioning into that map in this corner of the road where i got to this waypoint here there's an event over there that i don't think is too important let's come over here because i think there's a waypoint right over here plus we can explore this lake with a massive crate structure in the middle of it at non moa lake Yes, there is indeed a waypoint over here. So let's go ahead and grab this. And then I can continue up here a little bit where we can see the Hylic village, which is where one of the tasks are. And there's also a Quaggan village on the other side of the lake where there's actually an event going on right here. So maybe I'll help out with the event since it seems like a good opportunity to work on this task. And then I can go ahead and waypoint up to where I was talking about. Let's come up here and let's defend the chief where there are a ton of risen coming into here and we just unlocked this waypoint and I need to summon my flesh golem again. So I think I might definitely swap it over to play lands because I'm not really vibing with the flesh golem right now. And I think I would have more fun with the plague lands. But if I look over here, I think I got everything that is right here. I guess I could just run over here instead of waypointing now. I'm close enough. So maybe I'll do that. This is a pretty big area and the crate are coming in from multiple directions. I feel like it might be like the easiest to just stay near the chief and just kill any crate that come over this way since that's kind of what their goal is, is to kill the chief of this Hylic village and we can just wait for them to come to us and then we can kill them. There's our task complete and I got a crate scale from doing that. I wish we can double click to consume to unlock the crate. Oh no, Antiquorensium study collection, something along those lines. So let's double click this and we got an achievement point and unlocked this collection where we can unlock special crate weapons that can be obtained through crafting and we can buy them from a specific area in the world, I believe. And that's kind of just a fun collection that you can work on. Where let's come over this way to the one area that I said I would point to, but alas, I'm just going to run over here where there is a vista and a point of interest and a hero challenge over here. So let's go ahead and come this way where this area is just so beautiful. And the event failed. I left with like 20 seconds left. I thought for sure that the chief would be fine, but okay. 
Let's come over here and we have this hero challenge and there is a giant rampaging crab somewhere oh, further up there and then we have this hermit crab here that we can go ahead and deal with. So let's go ahead and just use all of our abilities and because he's a little tanky and he's blocking and evading attacks so the conditions might actually be good because of his evades. He also gets protection so he takes less damage and he gets regeneration which means he's going to be healing for some of his damage. So yeah, this is just a pretty tanky hero challenge, but he doesn't seem to be super strong when it comes to like dealing damage to me. And now that we have an ally here, it should go by even faster, which is good for us. So I think I've been talking about this for the last like few minutes, but I'm going to swap out my elite skill here from the summon flesh golem. And I could do a variety of things, but I think I don't want lich form. And let's go to Plague Land. So I can just pop this down for some condition damage. And as we unlock additional elite skills through special elite specializations that we will talk about in the far future, I can get a different elite skill that I may enjoy a little bit more. And I might just hold off on the others for right now and kind of consider my options in the future. But let's go ahead climb up this way where we have a very nice view in front of us and a very nice view with this vista. And let's go ahead and continue this way where this player is fighting this giant crab. So maybe I'll help out really quickly since they helped out with the hero challenge. And I, oh, I popped so many things on them and then the other person knocked them out of my fields. So that's kind of unfortunate, but it happens. So let's go ahead, just finish off the giant crab. We should get a nice amount of experience from this event, which is nice. And almost there, there we go. And I can see a waypoint just over here. So let's go ahead and swim this way and check my map again really quickly. I may have missed something else around the map, which I'll find out in just a few minutes. But I think most of what we have left is just in this area of the world. So let's go ahead and climb up here. I think we can climb up right here. And... We can climb up right there as you just saw and let's go ahead and come this way where I think there is going to be a cave entrance near this next waypoint down here which this lake is kind of funny because there's a waypoint right here a waypoint here a waypoint here a waypoint here a waypoint here so there are just five waypoints around this one well it's a decently large lake I suppose but we can grab this and then if we come over here we have a special area of the road where it's one of those areas where it's like named on the map and it has a location that we can explore which is our 150th area in the Shiver Peaks that we have explored and it's called the Tail of the Serpent but there's no map completion objectives in here but there is this champion cave troll somewhere oh hello just looking down on us so I'm going to leave this cave troll there because I do not want to mess with him. But we can go ahead and come this way where we have this area that's called Tail of the Serpent where I think there is a special area over here that is going to have a name that is kind of familiar to us. But I think I may come into the lake before I go down there because we have this task here to collect Quaggan treasures, defeat crate and free crate prisoners. So there's just a bunch of crate around here. And there are two events going on, including a champion crate witch. Which we'll see if I do maybe the other event, maybe not. And I probably won't do the crate witch, but we do have to climb up there. And this task is actually a little challenging for us right now because this is a level 60 task and we are currently level 58. So it has outleveled us just a little bit but that's gonna be okay since we are about to level up to level 59 and we are definitely doing well enough with our current skills and our current stats. It looks like the excavation event is now completed from a long time ago. I guess that event just kept going on and on where there are a lot of things attacking us right now. We are very close to leveling up. We are just like a quarter of a bar, less than that. Let's go ahead, swim around this way, 
where there's some quaggins in there and I think just right around here we can go ahead and get onto land and we can start exploring this area where yeah there are a ton of quaggin right there and I'm not sure what exactly I'm attacking there but let's come over here and maybe just pull them all and we can deal some AoE damage and we just knock them out of our own stuff because we leveled up to level 59 which is cool but we can go ahead and get some special things here I mean, I'm not sure which one I want I'm gonna just go ahead and pick that one for now but we have to deal with these crates and I can slowly work my way up the structure because we are completing the task along the way and I can go ahead and just clear the crate along the way and I do think I kind of enjoy completing this task on the structure a little bit more than underneath the structure just because our underwater skills right now are a little bit weak compared to our other stuff because if I come into here we can see I have some low level underwater weapons. It's always fun to climb up on crate structures because they're just very interesting because we just run along like this group of like fallen trees right here and then you have like old ship like parts and just have like random like cages that are being held up by chains. The crate witch is definitely summoning some rain at least. Okay, let's climb up here where there's some diving goggles there and the, oh, I just fell. And then the vista's up there pretty close to the crate witch. So maybe if we come here, and I guess I can go here, and let's very quickly just interact with this vista. As you can see, there's just a couple of whole ships that have like been pulled out of the water and are just being held up by these other supports. And altogether, it's made this crate outpost, which is just kind of a very interesting and unique structure. And with killing that crate, let's go ahead, come over here. Yes, and we can go ahead, climb up here, and let's skip past this veteran crate right here. And let's go ahead and just continue up this way carefully to the diving goggles equip those and then we can go ahead and drop down into the water and we have basically progressed our diving goggles achievement and we just need to kill a few more crate which i guess we can do in the water there's that task complete so we can see a cave entrance this way that we can go ahead and swim towards quaggins right see you so let's go ahead and accept that reward and we can go ahead and swim through here where we can see the unexplored map section right here where this is a really fun location it is milligans or milagans grotto i forget how you pronounce it but this is like the final big area that we have to explore where there's a waypoint which we need one waypoint, two points of interest, which we need two points of interest, one hero challenge, which we need one hero challenge, and we have every vista and task. So this is indeed the last area, and I successfully got every other location and map completion objective end of this map, which is nice. But on top of all the things we have here, there's actually one additional fun thing that we can go ahead and take a look at. But first, we need to come up here and grab this point of interest and then swim further into the cave where we have commander, plip, duel, and some trainees around here. Just some beautiful waterfalls all around here and of course some quaggin buildings underneath the water. But we have Bola Blop whom we can go ahead and chat with to get a hero point. So let's go ahead and chat with him where he says, would you like to hear the sad history of Crete and quaggins? A sad story, but one quaggin needs to share. It's not a complicated story. Quaggins have lived peacefully beneath the waters for many generations. When the dragons spewed their filth across Tyria, the Quaggins had to flee. Quaggins swam upward into the air onto land. There was no other choice, but Quaggins found other enemies in the shallow waters. The worst are the crate. They enslave Quaggins. There's our hero point from learning about a very sad story. And then we have this beautiful area right here with this gorgeous waterfall, which we can go ahead and get that point of interest. And that is the last piece 
of map completion we needed for Timberline Falls and we have now gotten a hundred percent map completion in this zone which is an incredible zone and if we come up here we can see more of this work exploring Timberline Falls greetings Athesaline the Tyrian Explorer Society has taken note of your accomplishments within Timberline Falls I understand you became a recognizable and welcome face throughout the region most importantly you survived your time in this challenging territory our records of your good deeds is growing thick. We wish you luck in your future explorations. Tyrian Explorer Society. Which I really love the idea of the Tyrian Explorer Society because it's just like an organization of people. But as I alluded to, there is one more fun thing in this area on top of all the points of interest and the, that hero challenge and of course that waypoint as well where we can climb through here and into here where we can see some commanders up there and a lot of players so i guess it has been long enough since last i recorded that maybe this is a weekly jumping puzzle again or there just happens to be a lot of people up here but as i just said this is a jumping puzzle where this is called Coddler's Cove, where Coddlers are basically like quaggins that take care of quag and hatchlings and try to help them grow up and basically survive past being a few days old where we can go ahead and begin this jumping puzzle by swimming through here and we can go ahead and come up into this special area where we can then begin at this jumping puzzle and this is kind of an interesting jumping puzzle because there's not really any gimmicks there's not really any like special interesting mechanics you have to do the start of it is kind of hidden where some newer players me included like way back in the day kind of struggle with finding where you start this and then you like stumble upon it or someone tells you but once you come up here we have these blue orbs and these orbs are really really cool looking and i'm not exactly sure what they are i think they're just like a special like quaggan thing that are like just lights that they have made from like different sea plants that are just hanging out right here that we can go ahead and utilize to climb up this way and basically as i said no mechanics nothing interesting just straight jumping where it's just these orbs over and over and over again and i do love a good jumping puzzle that's just straight jumping every now and then where this is just you know pretty simple pretty straightforward but it really just challenges you to understand how to jump where some of them are different sizes as we can see they're getting smaller right here but ultimately we can just get to the end where we have this grand chest and we have completed Carter's cove for 10 achievement points and we got a few items along the way so with that i've completed this jumping puzzle and last episode i completed the jumping puzzle up here and i got a hundred percent map completion in timberline falls which normally would bring us to the end of this episode but i want to do a little bit more because i am currently level 59 and a half and in order to do the next step of the personal story i have to be level 60. so let's go ahead and spend just a little bit of time leveling up in a different area of the world where we have completed many different areas like Halidon Forest, The Grove, and like uh, what other zones have you completed on this character? Has it just been Caledon, The Grove, and Timberland Falls? Oh, we did Harathi Hinterlands on this character as well. But we can go ahead and maybe do a little bit of a nostalgia trip and go back to episode one of this Let's Play series, which was like 66, 67 episodes ago, depending on how you count things. And let's come into Queensdale, where I've done a little bit of stuff here before, apparently, which I guess I came to at some episode on my Samori character, which maybe I've done the same exact thing before. Maybe that's why I have this idea. But let's go ahead and just run around this area. And of course, we should be very familiar with this area of the road if you watched my Let's Play series on episode one, where there is an event going on right here that we can go ahead and help out with. And since we are in a starting zone, this event is going to be very, very easy for us to complete. But a waypoint, good old Lieutenant Francis. Looks like there's another event right here, so we probably don't even have to complete too many objectives in order to level up. Jeb's Wheat Field. This is the first task we ever completed in Gilbert's 2 that we can go ahead and help out with right now with the Worm Mounds, of course, and then we kill the Worm Hatchlings that we've one shot. If I come down here, there's a bonus event going on, and then there's also my first birthday gift that I can get on this character, which is kind of fun. And I can go ahead and maybe I should wait to open it, but 
I'll just use the birth day booster, I suppose. But we got yet another Queen Jenna and a level 20 experience scroll. And I should definitely clear out my inventory a little bit. There's this task completed. We're now 20% of the way complete with Queensdale. We completed another task somewhere. Where did I complete a task in this map? Oh, all the way up here at the Shower of Beetleton. I remember I came through this area of the world to get to Codicus's Manor, and then I was just doing some stuff up there. So that's kind of fun. But I guess we can go ahead and come down here where we have this task we can do with the crawfish and the drakes. There's that task complete, and we still need a little bit more. So I suppose we can help out with the Divinity Dam, where we have all the earth elementals around here, and we have some small leaks we can deal with, of course. I think coming through this area now as a level 59 and comparing it to our experiences as a level 1 or level 2 I suppose is very interesting because as we came through here we were leveling up basically like after that task and then probably during this task we leveled up again where now that we are level 59 we have not even leveled up after completing these two and a half tasks and it kind of just shows how you as you level up you kind of need to do a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more with every single level and just requires you to spend more time in order to earn every single level after the previous one where the earlier levels are a little bit faster maybe to support players coming into the game to basically help them get started a little bit faster or maybe you have kind of like that idea of feeling like super rewarded and then it kind of like hooks you into the game a little bit Eda's orchard which of course is a very fun area because it's an apple orchard and there are a ton of spiders around here and my camera's kind of going haywire there and we can go ahead and help with this event and we have this waypoint and we have this task of course where upon completing maybe we'll get it right now we can go ahead and level up to level 60 which we have unlocked chapter 6 of the Guild Wars 2 personal story on this character and that is unlocked on three different characters but let's go ahead maybe just finish up this task since we are here we got a huge orchard spider that we can go ahead and deal with and we can complete our task as we do that last little group of spiders and I have so many items in my inventory so let's go ahead and loot even more items on top of that and I've completed those two things so let's go ahead and run back towards Shaymore where we have spent the last several episodes out in the open world doing a variety of different things, completing multiple different maps, uh, three specific maps, I suppose, since the last time that we have done some story. Where next episode, I think it is time for us to return to the personal story of Guild Wars 2 and begin chapter 6, which is the final chapter of the second act of Guild Wars 2. We're going into chapter 7 and chapter 8. Those are the final two acts of the game. So we are definitely starting to approach the end of the personal story for Guild Wars 2, which is fun. Of course, we still have a few more maps left to complete around the road, and of course, we have the next three chapters of the personal story, starting with chapter 6 next episode, which I mentioned this when I was exploring Sparkfly Finn a little bit, where the next episode is actually going to come in two weeks because I'm beginning another World of Warcraft Let's Play series, so instead of an episode every other week, we're going to wait two weeks as I begin that World of Warcraft series, and then we will go ahead and return back to every other week. So we're going to have a little bit of a break, but the next episode is going to be a big one, so it might be nice to have a little bit of a break before then. But I hope you all enjoyed watching this episode, and I hope you all are taking good care of yourselves. Remember, prayer, as always, to drink some water, check your posture, and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time in the world of Tyria. Goodbye.